Welcome to the Spider ILDO2 and 2SGS introduction and product training video. Spider mowers are a unique piece of equipment primarily designed for mowing tough terrains and inaccessible areas including the steepest slopes. All spider mowers are made of lightweight, high-strength aluminium alloys providing high climbing ability and low fuel consumption. This product weighs only 387 kilograms or 853 pounds. It is fitted with 24 or 25.5 horsepower two-cylinder air-cooled Kawasaki engine with high-pressure lubrication system for mowing high inclines. Low machine's weight ensures that most of the power of the engine is used for the mowing deck. Later on in this video, I'll explain the mowing system more in detail. Constant hydraulic four-wheel drive is supported by Hydrogear hydraulic pump and two Sauerdampfos hydromotors. Hydraulic oil tank is welded directly on the aluminum mowing deck. Advantage of that is the aluminum disperses the heat very well, therefore we do not need any additional cooling system for the hydraulic fluid. Speed range of the mower is 0 to 8 km or 0 to 5 miles per hour. Fuel tank volume is 16 liters or 4.2 gallons, with average fuel consumption being only 3.5 liters or 0 0.95 gallons per working hour. We are getting minimum 4 hours runtime on one full tank. Typically, the operator starts with the full tank in the morning, refuels the tank during the lunch break, and then finishes the working day. Beneath the fuel tank, we can find the engine oil drain hose. Steering function is supported by one servo motor and all four wheels are steered in unlimited 360 degrees. Therefore, Spider is the only mower on the market offering all direction mowing. Thanks to the patented steering system, you do not need to turn the mower around at the end of every mowing line and waste the extra time and productivity. Mower's control unit and transmitter are produced by NBB Controls out of Germany. The range is up to 100 meters or 300 feet. Recommended operating distance, depending on the area, is up to 30 meters or 100 feet. Another unique feature we have on our mowers is the stabilizing hydraulic winch, often described as a fifth wheel. The winch stabilizes the mower on steepest slopes up to 60 degrees or 173%. We can offer two different rope types. Both of them are 8 mm or 3 tenths of an inch in diameter and 25 meters or 82 feet in length. Every mower includes a toolkit with all essential tools for field servicing and spare fuses. Spider ILDO2 and 2SGS feature two different service positions. In the first position, we lift the wheels up in the air for basic controls, maintenance and service, steering chain lubrication and geometry alignment. Thanks to its light structure, Spider can easily be tilted on its side onto the service position for easier maintenance and access to the mowing system. This significantly reduces the time spent with basic maintenance procedures, such as the sharpening of cutting blades. The Spider mowing deck contains four rotating blades and provides 123 cm or 48.5 inch wide cut per pass. The inner volume of the Spider ILDO2 and 2SGS mowing deck is 211 liters or 55 gallons, which enables the mower to accumulate more material and at the same time deliver high quality cut and mulch, with no need to reduce the traveling speed when cutting overgrown and unmaintained grass. You can also see the intake and discharge tunnel, which again improves the overall field performance of the mower. Spider mowing blades are made of hardox steel material that provides both enough strength and flexibility in case of accidental impact on a solid obstacle. There are two options for cutting blades, straight blades for hard terrains and S-blades ideal for frequently maintained areas. While we have the mower in a service position, we can easily dismount the mowing blades for sharpening, balancing or other maintenance. Plus, we can also easily get beneath the mowing deck covers for maintenance and service of the belts and the electromagnetic clutch. Beneath the mowing deck, we find three belts. Hydraulic pump drive belt, electromagnetic clutch belt, which is self-tensioned by the special tensioning system. And then there is a large mowing belt connecting all four blades together. Ogura electromagnetic clutch is engaged and disengaged directly from the transmitter. 
The mower holds official certification for climbing ability up to 60 degrees and the mowing deck is certified for not throwing any objects off the cutting blades. Now we will get to the basics of driving the mower. Every mower is delivered with a spare battery for the transmitter and charger. The standard frequency range is 434 MHz and there are 29 different frequency channels which the operator can choose manually by holding the frequency button while at the same time pressing the connection button on the left side. The actual frequency number is shown on the display. The transmitter battery lasts for 24 hours and charging time from empty to full is 2 hours. An empty battery is indicated by letter L on the display together with an audible signal which repeats every 12 seconds. The charger is showing a green light when ready, an orange light when charging and a flashing orange light when the battery is fully charged. Insert the charged battery carefully into the slot in the transmitter. Make sure it locks in place. To start the mower, first turn the transmitter on with the emergency switch. Make sure that the red stop button is twisted to the out position. The transmitter will beep twice and there will be a selected frequency channel shown on the display. Then proceed to the mower, insert the key into the emergency stop button. Turn the key to the right side and make sure the switch is twisted to the out position. You will see the orange beacon light starts flashing on the carburetor version and on the EFI version the beacon next to the emergency stop button flashes twice in yellow color and then in blue color. At the same time the control panel on the mower will show power on, signal between the transmitter and receiver established, drive servo motor in neutral position. That means the mower will not move after the engine is started. As the next step, press the connection button once to establish a connection between the transmitter and receiver, followed by an audible signal as a confirmation. Turn the engine's RPM knob to approximately 50%. Make sure you do not stand in the mower's drive direction when starting the engine. On the carburetor version, pull up the engine's choke button for cold starts while at the same time press the engine start button on the transmitter. When engine is warm, you do not need to activate the choke button. On the EFI version, the choke function is activated automatically by the engine. The beacon light on the EFI version will change into green color once engine is started. Make sure the choke button is in the off position once engine is started. If there is an unsuccessful engine start attempt, you will not be able to start the engine again without pressing the engine stop button prior to beginning of any following engine start. The starter relay must be disengaged every time you start the engine. Height of cut adjustment range is shown on the corner cover stickers. High, medium and low. Activate the height of cut adjustment toggle switch on the transmitter in order to set the desired height of cut. Pressing the toggle switch down will lower the height of cut. Pressing the toggle switch up will increase the height of cut. To engage the mowing deck, set the engine's RPM to 50%. Press the blades on switch on the transmitter and increase the RPMs to 100%. There will be a red light illuminated on the mower's control panel. An EFI beacon will be flashing in red color. Press the blades off button to disengage the mowing deck. 
Note it is not possible to start the mower when the blades are engaged and the red light on the mower's control panel is illuminated. There are two different speed ranges you can choose from, hare and tortoise. Make sure the mower is standing still when switching from one speed range to the other. The drive function is proportional, which means the more you press the drive joystick, the faster the mower drives. Before driving the mower into an area with grass for the first time, make sure you set the right height of cut, engage the blades and slowly move the drive joystick forwards or backwards. Use two fingers for the drive joystick controls, thumb and pointing finger and one finger for the steering joystick controls. Carefully drive the mower onto the next mowing line at the end of the area you are mowing and continue in the opposite reverse direction. It is important to realize the steering function is now mirror-sided. For an ideal overlap, keep the edge of the mowing deck tunnel on the edge of the grass from the previous pass and continue driving the mower in the spider mode. Choose the right position so you do not stand in the direction of the mower's movement. Using the skid steering function, you can align the mower when mowing alongside of obstacles such as a fence line or hedges. Once you get familiar with all mower's functions, you can also adjust the height of cut while driving the mower depending on the changing environments and terrains. The skid steering function can be activated only when the wheels are turned alongside with the side bumpers and mower follows the hydraulic winch direction. To engage skid steering function, hold the skid steering button on the side of the transmitter and move the drive joystick forwards or backwards. Make sure the engine's RPM are set at 50% or more while skid steering to maintain enough power to the hydraulic system. In sensitive areas where there are no ground damages allowed, you can skid steer step by step by pressing and releasing the skid steering button repeatedly. When skid steering on slopes, be very careful and aware of the particular area and slopes incline. Skid steer only when necessary and slowly so you have a full control over the mower. The mower can slide down the slope or roll over if the skid steering function is used wrongly on slopes. Do not use the steering function while the mower is standing still. Always make forwards or backwards movements while using the steering function. 
Steering while driving will require less power from the steering servo motor, therefore the chances of burning the steering fuse will be greatly reduced. Every operator must read the operator's manual thoroughly before attempting to work with the mower. The operator manual is an essential part of every mower's delivery. Make sure you inspect the working area for any hidden obstacles. If the grass growth is high or wet, select a higher mowing height. The lowest height setting is used when mowing well-maintained and even areas. When mowing unknown areas for the first time, we recommend mowing with a higher mowing setting. Do not engage the mowing blades when the mower is standing in tall grass. Always control the mower from a working station, which gives you a perfect view of the whole working area and the mower. While working, change your position to view the mower at all times. Always choose a suitable driving speed which enables an acceptable mowing quality. On a previously mowed area, lower the height of cut in order to achieve better quality cutting and mulching results. There are three different ways how to approach the area to be mowed. The first is to drive the mower preferably with the mowing tunnel forward in order to achieve the best cutting and mulching quality results. The intake and discharge tunnel allows for higher mowing speeds resulting in increased productivity. As previously mentioned, in order to achieve the ideal overlap between the mowing rows, keep the edge of the mowing tunnel on the edge of the row from the previous pass. Second, driving the mower diagonally or in a diamond shape is beneficial when approaching uneven terrains or when driving over other obstacles such as sidewalk curbs and similar. In this position, the mower maintains maximum stability and adhesion to the terrain. The last option is to drive the mower with the side bumper forwards. This driving method is used when approaching unknown areas with extremely tall vegetation where the operator cannot easily walk through. The mowing blades are in this case protected by the side bumpers and the mowing deck, thus reducing the chances of damaging the mowing blades. Make sure you adjust the driving speed according to the type of terrain. Driving the mower too fast when colliding with solid obstacles hidden in the tall grass can damage the side bumpers and the mowing deck. Make sure you choose the right position when the mower approaches obstacles or when driving around objects so you have a perfect overview of the area and the mower. Never lose sight of the mower while driving. When mowing on slopes horizontally, it is recommended to have the rubber side of the wheels facing down the slope.
When working on a slope, start from the bottom and work your way to the top. Only select a top to bottom method in exceptional circumstances and only on well-known terrain. An audible signal will be activated when the slope's incline exceeds 35 to 40 degrees depending on the ground's conditions. The operator must carefully evaluate the working environment and the mower's performance every time the audible signal is activated. If you choose to drive the mower vertically on slopes without the use of the stabilizing winch, make sure you control the mower's speed well, especially when driving down the slope. Driving the mower too fast can result in loss of traction. Never stand directly in the mower's path. In order to achieve maximum adhesion to the ground when driving the mower horizontally on slopes, place the mower diagonally or in a diamond shape. This method is also preferable when mowing uneven terrains on slopes. Once you see the mower struggling to perform on extremely steep slopes, you can deploy the stabilizing hydraulic winch. Using the winch prevents damage to maintain terrains. In order to use the winch function, place the mower on or at the base of the slope. Make sure the wheel side covers are facing towards the top of the slope. Wheels are turned across the slope. Set the engine's RPMs to minimum and turn the cutting blades off. Activate the winch on the transmitter, release the rope and while pushing the drive joystick gently backwards, start walking up the slope towards the anchoring point with rope in hand. To loosen more rope, gently push the drive joystick backwards. Anchor and tighten the carabine. Turn the blades on and set the engine's RPM to maximum. Tighten the winch rope by gently pushing the drive joystick forward. Find the safest position having good visibility of the entire area. Never stand directly below or above the mower's path. Drive the mower onto the next mowing row only when the rope is not making contact with the ground. Do not change directions when the rope is being dragged over the hill's shoulder. To finish working with the winch, place the wheels once again across the slope. Turn the mowing blades off and set the engine's RPMs to minimum. Unhook the carabine. Keep in mind that the wheels must be placed across the slope before using the winch. Failing to turn the wheels across the slope can lead to serious damage when the drive joystick is pushed backwards while the operator is walking away from the mower. It is also possible to drive the mower horizontally on slopes while using the stabilizing winch. In this case, the operator must always keep pressing the drive joystick forward in order to maintain enough tension on the winch rope and steer the wheels when changing the directions. This method is used only occasionally. Here is another practical example of the stabilizing winch function.
When changing the anchoring points, always turn the wheels across the slope, set the engine's RPMs to the minimum and disengage the mowing blades. When mowing on driving over the edges of a slope, always set the maximum height of cut. Never stand directly below or above the mower's path. Adjust the cutting height accordingly to the currently maintained area and terrain. On short slopes with unstable and steep terrain, drive the mower slowly from top to bottom. On unstable grounds, Steer in a circular motion, so the mower is driven only from the top to the bottom. This mowing approach will not cause any damage to the ground. Be careful not to exceed the mower's limits on slopes. If the slope is too steep, use the stabilizing winch. When mowing challenging areas with overgrown vegetation for the very first time where the operator cannot easily inspect for obstacles and other objects, use the following approach. Drive the mower carefully into the area from a safe place. Then position the mower with the bumper side forward and start mowing. In this case the cutting blades are protected by the side bumper and the mowing deck. Adjust the driving speed to the particular terrain. When approaching a challenging area with light brush or overgrown vegetation, always make sure the stabilizing winch is facing opposite the area to mow, so in case the mower gets stuck, you can use the winch to pull the mower out. Note that the winch will provide only a small amount of extra pulling power. Always make sure you set the mower to the maximum height of cut. Once you have the mower inside an area with overgrown vegetation, drive full speed forward into the brush until the mower cannot go any further. Then drive it backwards. Continue mowing using this method to clear small areas at a time to avoid the engine from stalling or stopping altogether. <laughs> 